Last year, word broke that BlackBerry would be using TCL to create and manufacture BlackBerry branded smartphones. The first sign of this partnership was seen with the BlackBerry DTEC50 and the DTEC60 that launched in mid-2016. And while the phones weren't necessarily bad, there simply wasn't enough there to keep folks interested. Especially those looking for a phone that really did look and feel like a BlackBerry from yesteryear. We've been hearing rumors and plenty of talk of yet another BlackBerry smartphone that TCL is working on, but that this time around the company will move away from the slight all-touch screen design and opt for a more traditional looking BlackBerry handset with a physical keyboard. This smartphone has been codenamed as the Mercury, and we were able to get an early hands-on demo of the phone ahead of its official launch. I'm Joe Maring with Phone Arena, and this is our very first look at the forthcoming BlackBerry Mercury. As a quick preface to this whole thing, the model of the BlackBerry Mercury that we got to play with is a very early version of the smartphone. The TCL rep we spoke to wouldn't dish out any exact specs at all, and they made it very clear to not show any of the system settings on camera. The company will be announcing these sort of details on the phone at Mobile World Congress in late February, so think of this as a little sneak peek of what's to come. Spec secrecy and unfinished software aside, our hands-on time with the BlackBerry Mercury was honestly a lot of fun. I'm personally a bit too young to accurately remember the glory days of BlackBerry, but as someone who greatly appreciates a focus on security and a phone that's a workstation first and an entertainment device second, I can greatly appreciate what TCL is trying to do here. Gone is the Alcatel Idol 4S design ripoff that we saw with the DTEC50, as the BlackBerry Mercury is bringing back the iconic physical keyboard in all of its tactile glory. Virtual keyboards have gotten great over the years, but even with this being so, they simply cannot match the experience you get by typing on real, physical keys. In addition to this, the keyboard is also packing in a few additional tricks. For starters, you can swipe around on the keyboard to navigate through the UI, just like you could on the BlackBerry Passport, and TCL has also included a fingerprint sensor that's baked right into the spacebar. Now we weren't able to test out the speed of the fingerprint reader in our hands-on time with the phone, but this really is a great use of space on TCL's part. Above the keyboard are three capacitive navigation buttons for back, home, and recent apps, and moving above this is where you'll find the Mercury's display. TCL unsurprisingly wouldn't confirm the exact size or resolution that's present here, but the display does look good to our eyes. The aspect ratio of the screen is closer to the likes of a 4x3 nature due to the physical keyboard that's present here. And while this is certainly less than ideal for watching movies, it's quite fantastic for pretty much any sort of productivity related tasks. Navigating through the UI on the BlackBerry Mercury felt snappy enough, but seeing as how the software that's on the unit we played with isn't final, it's a bit too early to make any final judgments on it. In fact, it's really too early to make any judgments on any aspects of the phone. The appearance of the BlackBerry Mercury at this year's CES was a sign of what's to come more than anything else. The DTEC50 wasn't the most positively received smartphone from last year, and from what we've seen so far, TCL is really looking to resolve a lot of those complaints with the Mercury, or whatever the company decides to name the phone when they get to that point. The BlackBerry Mercury still has quite a journey ahead of it before it's ready for prime time, but after today's initial hands-on with the phone, I think it's safe to say that BlackBerry and TCL could have a very compelling handset here. Speaking of compelling handsets, we've uploaded a ton of other CES 2017 related videos to our YouTube channel, so be sure to check those out if you haven't already. We also have even more coverage in the pipeline, so stay tuned here and at our website at phonearena.com for all the latest coverage from the show floor and beyond. I've been Joe Marin with Phone Arena, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.